Good evening, explorers, and welcome to another Native Nevada Nature. If you're new to this, this is my series to highlight one plant or one animal species native to Nevada. It's an educational presentation for all ages to watch, enjoy, and learn. So I hope you do. This is presented by the Nevada Conservation League, and I'm exploratory. And I'm here to take you on this journey to learn about a very special animal species today. Um, before we begin, if you have any questions throughout the presentation about this animal or about conservation efforts in general, go ahead and chat or type them in the Facebook comment section if you're watching this live, and I will answer the questions at the end of this presentation. Now, today I'm going to talk about a wonderful, rare species that is not only native to Nevada, it is endemic to Nevada, meaning that you cannot find this animal anywhere else in the world but right here in our desert. And that is the Devil's Hole Puckfish. Now when you hear Devil's Hole, you probably think of some very scary things uh, maybe literally a devil popping out of a hole or a very scary fish associated with this name. But in actuality, the devil's hole pupfish look just like this. Very cute, <laughs> if you'd ask me. <laughs> uh, so their genus species name is Cyprinodon diabolus. Cyprin is Greek, meaning carp. Odin is Greek, meaning tooth, meaning tooth carp. And Diabolus is Latin, meaning devil or evil one. I don't know who to associate evil one with such a cute little creature, but that's its name. So the Devil's Hole Pupfish is not the only pupfish you can find here in Nevada. Uh, there are currently 49 recognized species in this genus. Um, the two closest ones to our little guy in the Ash Meadows area are the Ash Meadows Armagosa Pupfish, which is pictured on the left and the Warm Springs Pupfish, which is pictured on the right. Both of them can be found in the Ash Meadows area. Um, some of them are in slightly elevation, different elevation than the Devil's Hole Pupfish. There are other pupfish also in the area. In the Death Valley area, there are three species, the Salt Creek, the Cotton, Mount, Cotton Ball Marsh, and the Saratoga Springs Pupfish. And in the Armagosa River near, near Topoca, Ticopa is the Armagosa pupfish. All these species were believed to be related, but after thousands and thousands of years of being isolated, they've all become separate different populations. But today I'm going to be teaching you how to identify our specific devil's whole pupfish. So this pupfish is the smallest pupfish species in the genus Cyprinodon, with lengths up to 1.2 inches. Very, very small, very, very tiny. <laughs> the average length being only 0.9 inches, even smaller. <laughs> the males and females differ in color. The males can be pictured at the top picture uh, with a metallic blue with purple highlights. And then they kind of have a gold uh, shimmering, gold iridescence on the back. Uh, the females have a yellowish brown color um, and they're but their margins near their uh, gills are a little bit greenish, highlighted green. Uh, so the females and juveniles are much lighter and the males are much more of that metallic blue. Uh, the individuals lack pelvic fins um, and they've been able to identify this pupfish based on the amount of razor in their fins, the amount of scales across their entire body, but this guy being so small and in such a small area, you would have to be really close in order to ever count them. Um, but small little bodies um, and they um, have reduced activity and aggression, but they do have teeth. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about where you can find the devil's whole pupfish. You can find them right in the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, this is located in the Armagosa Desert, in the Armagosa Valley, in southwestern Nevada, uh, very east of Death Valley. 
Um, best way to put it, it's 90 minutes northwest of Las Vegas. It's in the Funeral Mountains and the Armagosa Range. Um, the Armagosa River is part of the Devil's Hole and the region's aquifer hydrology, so it's all connected in the same area. The cool thing about Ash Meadows is that it's home to about 26 endemic plant or animal species. So the Devil's Hole pupfish is not the only species you can never find anywhere else but in this small area. Um, cool other fact is that Ash Meadows is home to the most endemic species concentrated in such a small area than anywhere else in the United States. Who knew? Right here in our state. All right, let's zoom in onto the Devil's Hole. Uh, so the aerial picture on the left, you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, it looks like um, it's a hill, and that's basically what it is. Um, when you zoom in on the right, you can actually see the Devil's Hole in its water. Uh, so it is a water-filled cavern extending into the hillside. It's at an elevation of 2,400 feet above sea level. And the water is a constant temperature of 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty nice water, if you ask me. <laughs> the Devil's Hole is about 72 feet long and 11, by 11 and a half feet wide. And the depth of the Devil's Hole is known to be at least 430 feet deep, although no one has ever reached the bottom of the Devil's Hole. <laughs> kind of scary. <laughs> Uh, the Devil's Hole is known to be maybe the smallest habitat in the world containing an entire population of a vertebrate species. All right, let's zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so this is a diagram or a figure of what the Devil's Hole kind of looks like. Um, you can kind of see it's this uh, narrow, uh, narrowing of water. And at the beginning of it is this rock that extends out. And what's that, what that's called is called the spawning shelf. Uh, spawning shelf is uh, basically where the devil's hole will spawn or breed. And it's also used as a place for a lot of their favorite food, algae, to grow on. So uh, that spawning shelf is very important for this um, species. And then you can see it going all the way down and further into a tiny crack where no one has been able to calculate the depth of this hole. Pretty scary. All right, let's talk about the habitat. Uh, so the interesting thing about the Devil's Hole is that it has a really low oxygen count, and it's pretty salinity, has high salinity, lots of salt. Uh, so it's these little tiny fish are surviving in these drastic conditions. Although the pupfish have been as found as deep as 80 feet, the numbers are most dense at depths of 49 feet or above, just about the length of that spawning shelf. They probably won't go very much deeper. As I mentioned before, they depend heavily on that spawning shelf um, for their diet and for breeding. And their ecosystem is super fragile and can be uh, disturbed by earthquakes, floods, um, and different ecological events. And I will go into depth on that later. But right now, let's talk about the life of the Devil's Hole pupfish. What it would be like to live in the same area for your entire life. So although they spawn or breed year round, uh, spawning peaks from mid-February to mid-May uh, with a smaller peak between July and September. Uh, spawning can also happen out of season due to ecological uh, occurrences, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, but usually the female will lay an egg and the, fem the male will immediately fertilize it. Uh, the devil's hole pupfish, they have low fecundity rates, uh, meaning their capability to create offspring is really low. The average female might only produce four or five mature egg cells each breeding season and those mature egg cells represent 10 to 20 percent of the total ova, ova produced very low numbers during each spawn a mature female is thought to only produce one single 
egg. And that egg is really small. It's about one millimeter or 0 0.039 inches in diameter. Tiny, tiny. In addition to their low fecundity rates, eggs also have low hatching success and juveniles have low rates of survival. So uh, not only do they only lay one egg per spawning session, the juveniles have low rates of survival and the eggs have low hatching success. Add on top of that, the individuals of the devil's hole pupfish have a lifespan of 10 to 14 months. So not only is it hard for them to survive, they only live for about a year or a little bit further than that. It's crazy that this small of a species lives for only one year. All right, remember when I mentioned ecological disturbances? Well, the cool thing about the devil's hole is that it can react to different types of events all around the world. Uh, there have been instances where large scale earthquakes happen and within minutes, the devil's hole will respond to that activity. Uh, these large-scale large scale earthquakes will cause standing waves to kind of roll through the entire hole. And these are known as sites. Uh, these sites in the Devil's Hole can lead to unseasonal spawning events to the Devil's Hole pupfish due to the disruption of the pupfish environment. Uh, the waves by the earthquakes can scour the algae from the rocks, affecting their food supply and in response, uh, they breed. You know, it's a dangerous situation they've become in. Uh, so what I have here uh, shown on the slide are three sets of pictures. The first one is the before picture, the picture of what the Devil's Hole looked like prior to the July 4th earthquake. So if you are were living in Southern Nevada or Southern California in 2019, you might remember an earthquake happening in Ridgecrest, California. Well, this first picture was taken before the earthquake. The second picture was taken after the earthquake um, in, on July 4th. You could see the entire bed or the entire floor of algae has been just wiped away and the water is much clearer. And then after the second earthquake on July 5th, the water is even clearer and you could see no sign of algae, their favorite food, on the spawning shelf. It's pretty amazing. Uh, there was an instance with the Alaskan earthquake in 2018. Uh, a release reported that while the quake triggered only eight inch tsunami in the Pacific, it caused waves over a foot high in the Devil's Hole. It's pretty crazy. Scientists will utilize this area, this small area in Nevada, to keep track of uh, earthquake and uh, seismic activity. Amazing. All right, let's talk about the pupfish in the community. What role do they play in our ecology? So the Devil's Hole pupfish consumes a variety of food items, uh, representing all near possible food resources in the Devil's Hole. Makes sense. If you're going to live there your whole life, you might as well eat everything you can. <laughs> its food resources include inorganic particulate matter, which is limestone, uh, diatoms or single cell algae, and spirogyra or uh, filamentous algae. Uh, the predators of the devil's hole include a diving beetle species uh, which consumes its eggs in juveniles. Uh, the diving beetle species also is shown to eat the same invertebrates as the devil's hole pupfish does, meaning that it's not only a predator of the species, it is a competitor competing with the devil's hole in their small population size. Um, interesting thing about the diving beetle is that it was only recently added to the ecosystem as they've been studying the devil's hole pupfish and the devil's hole it was first documented in the hole in 1999 or 2000. All right, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of a picture of what the devil's hole looks like when you go there. Uh, this is a side picture, uh, kind of a little bit old, 
um, but you could see it's completely fenced off and gated. Uh, when I went to go visit there a couple of weeks ago, this is what the fenced off area looks like. This is the only accessible way to look at the Devil's Hole. It is completely fenced, completely guarded, so that there won't be any trespassers into the area, destroying the equipment, messing up with the Devil's Hole published eggs, and uh, to prevent drowning. Uh, mysterious fact, in 1965, uh, two people dived into the Devil's Hole pupfish and they were never to be found. Or the Devil's Hole water, and they were never to be found. Uh, so they have it all bordered and guarded up to prevent drowning and to prevent trespassers. But if you are ever lucky enough to be a scientist or a volunteer to work with the Devil's pupfish count, you will see water like this an amazing ocean, as if you're crawling into a cavernous ocean, looking into the depths of our waters. It's amazingly beautiful. So to get access to the Devil's Hole, you gotta be part of the population counts. Population counts are conducted twice a year, in the spring and the fall. Um, usually the fall population is much larger than the spring. Uh, and this is how they do it. They got the surface team. Uh, they will be bending over, looking down in pillars, staring at the pupfish that are along that spawning shelf. And they will count each individual species. Then you got the scuba team. Uh, this is a submerged team that will dive down into the water and they will do the count of the pupfish that are residing below the spawning shelf. We'll add those numbers together, and that's their yearly population counts. A really cool thing, and it'll be really cool to be on the scuba diving team where you're submerged into waters that look like this. It's amazing. All right, let's talk about the history of the Devil's Hole pupfish, because um, although this is a mysterious little guy, they've been documenting information for it since the 1950s. So the age of the species is subject to considerable debate. <laughs> A lot of this you'll find is under considerable debate. <laughs> the Devil's Hole was formed around 60,000 years ago, with some researchers assuming the pupfish has existed in isolation from 10,000 to 20,000 years. How the devils or how the devil's hole pupfish colonized the devil's hole is still unknown, although there have been hypotheses conducted by uh, different scientists. Um, some believe that they arrived via subterranean waters over dry land. Uh, they, there's documentations of Native Americans who used pupfish species as food, uh, so it, it also believed that they could have introduced the pupfish to the devil's hole, maybe unintentionally or not. Uh, they know that it was broken from its common ancestor, uh, the, Armor, the Ash Meadows pupfish, at about 217 to 2530 years ago in one study. In two studies, uh, they were basing it on genetic data sets. They figured that first it first colonized the hole within the past 1,000 years, and another study suggested that it was as old as 60,000 years ago. So a lot of conflicting information in the scientific community. Um, a lot of things are still unknown and they're still testing on it today. But the one thing we do know about the Devil's Hole pupfish is a lot of their history, at least the modern history. So they first started in 1930 when ichthyologist Joseph Wales completes the first taxonomic description of the Devil's Hole pupfish. In 1952, the Devil's Hole incorporated into the Death Valley National Monument by executive order from President Truman. And on July 17, 1952, he had to say about this. The said pool, Devil's Hole, is of such outstanding scientific importance that it should be given special protection, evidenced by the presence in the pool of a particular race of desert fish. And then 
In the 1960s and the 1970s, there was an agricultural boom in the area. And agricultural irrigation caused the water to drop in the Devil's Hole, resulting in less and less water on the spawning shelf to remain submerged. Remember, that's important for their food source and their babies. For it to not be submerged is very dangerous. And what uh, came about that is actually several court cases ensued, resulting in the Supreme Court case called Kaepernert versus United States, which determined that the preservation of the Devil's Hole as a national monument in 1952 implicitly included preservation of adequate groundwater to maintain the scientific value of the pool and its fauna. And with that, the area was protected. Since then, uh, yearly counts started in, 19, in the 1970s, uh, where they kept up with the population counts yearly as they do to this day. Uh, after groundwater uh, irrigation had to be put on hold or had enough to supply the Devil's Hole, uh, recovery of water level and pupfish abundance happened. And since then, there's been a relatively stable population since the late 70s. And then uh, there was an instance in the early 2000s or 2010s where it kind of dropped off. So with that being said, uh, let's talk about the conservation status of the Devil's Hole pupfish. So the Devil's Hole pupfish was actually one of the first species to be listed under the Endangered Species Act. It's pretty cool. It was listed in 1967 and it was made in 1966. So therefore, it is listed endangered um, by the U.S. federal government and critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature since 2014. Um, since uh, so the remains for this... Um, so uh, let's talk about the graph. So you can kind of see the water level dropped and the population dropped immensely. Um, but since then, there's been continuous nice populations up until this drop right here. And actually, in April 2013, the population count of the pupfish showed only 35 remaining in the wild. When... On average, the population's counts peaked at around 550 individuals. That dip in April 2013 has been steadily increasing, and since the last known count in the spring of 2019, there's been an average of 136 individuals. Um, I don't know any information on the 2020 count. I'm not sure if they skipped it due to COVID, but that's the last known count that I find. Um, and the reasons for that sharp decline of 35 individuals has actually been a mystery. Um, and one of the things you'll notice I keep saying is that there's a lot of mysteries towards this population. And it's mostly because the Devil's Hole pupfish are in a very unique environment, an environment that no other species, no other vertebrate species can uh, be uh, the same to have comparable studies. And they don't live very long. It's hard to do long-term studies on a population that only lives for one year. But they can come up with some hypothesis. The first one is disease or introduced pathogen. Um, there's always a potential for those coming into the environments to bring something unintentionally. Um, of course, when there's small populations, there can be increased inbreeding, um, which reduces the genetic diversity which may decrease the uh, survival ship of the pupfish, decrease their fitness. And there can just be a change in ecosystem. A lot of this we are doing so much studies on, but we still have no idea. Um, but there have been direct threats to the pupfish, the groundwater depletion being a uh, obvious one, but human action still can affect the pupfish in other ways as well. In 2004, a flash flood swept the scientific monitoring equipment into the Devil's Hole, causing the death of an estimated 80 pupfish. And in April 2016, very recent, three men broke into the Devil's Hole, destroying scientific equipment and just smashing the pupfish eggs and the larvae. So sad. <laughs> So although there's these threats out here, scientists are working on breeding and helping breeding populations of the devil's pup, whole pupfish. 
Um, there have been attempts to maintain captive populations of pure devil's hole pupfish in the 90s and 2000s. All have failed. There was a captive hybrid population of the Ash Meadows Armagosa pupfish crossed with the Devil's Hole pupfish, and they have actually continued to thrive. And you could find them at the Shark Reef at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. But in the early 2010s, a full scale replica of the Devil's Hole was built. And this is called the Ash Meadows Fish Conserv Conservation Facility, AMFCF, pictured right here. Uh, results in a 100,000 US gallon tank. This refuge nearly mimics the natural uh, environment of the Devil's Hole, including the water chemistry, spawning shelf, natural sunlight. It does differ slightly. The temperature is slightly cooler and the dissolved oxygen content is actually higher. So more oxygen, not as cold, I mean, not as warm. And they hope that that would help uh, with the breeding population uh, for this captive population. And it's actually been working. Since 2019, there have been at least 50 captive fish populated in this refuge um, with an additional 10 to 20 propagation in tanks. Uh, lay, eggs laid in the refuge seem to be raised to adulthood um, in a separate tank, um, but so far their survival rate has been much higher here than in the real world. 50% egg viability compared to 10 to 20, 80% survival rate, um, and there seems to be reproduction in multiple generations. So this facility is a really cool example of scientists uh, building something in nature and recreating it and having success. Of course, not everybody is happy about the pupfish. Uh, there seems to be a backlash towards this little guy. It's interesting. Sometimes conservation efforts aren't shared positively with the population, uh, particularly with the Cabernet family. If you remember the court case in 19, 1970s, the Cabernet family opened a ranch and invested $70 million into opening a ranch in this area. And they found that they could no longer withdraw the same amount of water. Uh, their attorney specified that the Supreme Court had chosen the interests of a fish over people. Um, and the newspaper editor in the nearby prompt threatened to dump pets pesticide in the devil's hole to kill them all. So sometimes you might drive around and see these bumper stickers that say, kill the pupfish. And of course, there's a response to say, save the pupfish. Um, but sometimes conservation efforts cost money. Millions of dollars have been spent conserving the devil's whole pupfish. And not everybody is in favor of it. Thankfully, the Cabernet family ended up selling the ranch in the late 1970s, seeing as it wasn't profitable. But that always brings up the question about at what cost do we go to for the lengths of conservation? In the Devil's Hole Pupfish case, they have much to teach scientists about the adaptation of adverse conditions. It has adapted to survive in very warm water with very low oxygen content. Um, a very rare type of thing that we still need to understand and study. Um, not only that, but the Devil's Hole provides us with seismic activity information all across the world. And it always uh, brings up the system about how all living things are part of a complex um, and part of the same ecosystem. Uh, no one knows how the extinction of one organism will affect all the members in the ecosystem, but the removal of one single species can set off a chain reaction affecting many others. And that's why scientists still work to preserve even the rarest little fish in the world. Plus, you get really cool scientific pictures just like these two. <laughs> if you want to know more about the Devil's Hole pupfish and recovery actions, uh, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, they even have a field office in Las Vegas and a phone number you can call if you want to get involved. Um, but that is my presentation on the Devil's Hole pupfish. A lot of information for such a small fish. <laughs> um, but this, I will now open it up to questions from the audience that I will answer. And it looks like um, 
we have some questions already put up. So the first one is, how did the Devil's Hole come to be? It is, a is it a consequence of glacier melt? Uh, so a lot, of Las, or a lot of Las Vegas area, Southern Nevada was covered in water. Um, as water resided, a lot of these pools ended up um, getting created. Um, of course, for the ash meadows, um, it is described as having a um, discharge point for groundwater that is uh, extended over 100 miles uh, northeast. 30 seeps and springs bring to the surface fossil water, which has entered the groundwater system thousands of years ago. Uh, so it's all this groundwater that has been stored, that has been brought up into these pools and these uh, streams. And uh, as time went on, these pools and streams kind of recited and um, lowered down. And that's why there's separate populations of pupfish. And one of them ended up in the devil's hole. Why is the water so hot? That is a great question. I'm glad somebody answered that. So... Not only is the Devil's Hole at a steady 91 degrees Fahrenheit, the rest of the Ash Meadows complex, their pools and uh, areas of waters, their springs, are actually at about 86 Fahrenheit too, so it's also hot. And it's all due to the ther thermal activity going on underground. So all that thermal energy comes up and actually warms the water. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Why doesn't the Devil's Hole pupfish exist anywhere else? Uh, well, fish, especially in our desert, uh, they can't travel very far, so they're very limited to the water around them. And since these pools and these streams kind of resided and the hole is only connected into the hole, Devil's Hole are pretty much stuck there. Um, as I mentioned before, the scientific community is still not sure of when the Devil's Hole population resided in the Devil's Hole, whether it was 10,000 or 2,000 or 60,000 years ago. A lot of that is still being conducted in the scientific community. Um, but as I mentioned before, they have uh, similarly related species like the Ash Meadows pupfish that are found in nearby strings in the Ash Meadows community. Um, so they must have been connected in the population at some point and just um, as the streams and ponds resided, they got separated and therefore became two separate populations. And just one of them happened to be only in the Devil's Hole. Um, how can you volunteer to help the pupfish? That's a great question. I will put the Las Vegas field information for the Devil's Hole um, into the chat uh, after this presentation so you guys can get a little bit more information. Um, of course, just supporting your wildlife refuges in general, making sure that they get funding, they get support, they don't get cut off. Um, the Devil's Hole is listed as a national monument through Death Valley, uh, so it has some protection right there. But um, it's always cool to support your local wildlife refuges and national monuments. Um, go visit them, go talk to them, and uh, provide support, financial support to them. Unfortunately, you got to be very uh, selective to be on the volunteer crew to go out and do the population counts. Um, but if they ever open that opportunity, let Exploratory know because I'd love to be on that count. <laughs> um, is this the only species in the Devil's Hole? No, it's not actually. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a diving beetle that came in there in the 2000s. Uh, there's lots of algae, lots of small bugs and uh, small invertebrate activity. Uh, nothing really big. It seems like the Devil's Hole might be uh, one of the biggest predators out there. Of course, because it's a cavern, it does have access to other individuals entering the ecosystem. Uh, for instance, owls will like to go in there and uh, they will like to roost and nest in the Devil's Hole. Um, and they actually provide some nutrients into the Devil's Hole as well. So it's open access to individuals in that area. Um, but it seems like the Devil's Hole pupfish is one of the largest individuals in the Devil's Hole ecosystem. 
Where is exactly the replica devil's hole, and can people visit this that one instead of the actual hole? Um, that's a good question. As far as I know, it is very near the actual devil's hole. It's on the Ash Meadows complex. Uh, when I visit there, I didn't actually go see the Ash Meadows uh, conservation facility. I just know it's in the area. I believe that you could see it from the outside, but I don't think it's open to the population, and it may also not be open due to COVID. Uh, but because of the fragility of this population, a lot of the uh, things for this population have been closed off to the community, especially due to the backlash of the Devil's Hole pupfish on public opinion. Um, everything towards them has been locked, caged, monitored by uh, equipment so you can't sneak in. Um, they are highly, highly protected and would not want anybody to disrupt their species. But um, I will look into maybe tours of the facility, hopefully when COVID gets uh, resolved. Um, but I will let you know the exact location of the facility and I'll post that in the comment section. Do the pupfish have any predators? They do. They have a special diving beetle um, that is entered into the population. Uh, they prey on the, the eggs and the larvae. Um, that's one of the ones that I currently know about. <laughs> it looks like my sister said hi. Hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it on the devil's pupfish. If anybody has any further questions about this little tiny species or anything about the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, you can go ahead and put them in the comments section. Of course, you can also join me on December 4th for Wild Nevada, a celebration of Wildlife Conservation Day. So on this day, I'm going to show a virtual hike of the Ash Meadows area. So a lot of the footage taken in this presentation was from PBS, thank you PBS, but I actually went and visited Ash Meadows and the Devil's Hole personally, and I got it all on footage and video. So go ahead and check that out, along with other virtual hikes of other places in Southern Nevada and places in Northern Nevada. We're gonna have special guest speakers from the Protectors of Tule Springs and the Nevada, Nevada Wildlife Federation, and we're going to be doing wildlife bingo throughout the entire events. So join in and you might also win a prize. So this online event is December 4th from 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific time. Um, go ahead. I will post the information on the Facebook page, but it's also on our Facebook event page. Uh, go ahead and sign up. You can join in on the Zoom link or it will be on Facebook Live so you can join in from the comfort of your own Facebook. Uh, but join in, have fun, win some prizes, and learn about Wildlife Conservation Day. And as always, thank you for joining me for Native Nevada Nature. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for joining me on this presentation. I used to do this weekly before elections and before Thanksgiving. Um, but now this will be my final presentation until after the new year. Once the new year comes, we will be back on a weekly track of learning one plant or animal species. So make sure to tune in and join me then, right here on Nevada Conservation League Facebook Live. Um, but until then, happy holidays. Please enjoy them. Please stay safe. And as always, keep on exploring. <laughs>